not. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noah West Designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is Mr. Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Rest Creative Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. This is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make an inspirational project for you folks and folks abroad everywhere. <laughs> We're running on new hardware, so I apologize for any uh, sort of dodginess, sketchiness. Please let us know in the comments how we're coming in on a scale of, I don't know, one to five, I guess is easy. Welcome everybody in the chat room. Uh, thank you for joining us on this Thursday morning. Yeah. So we're running on new hardware, like I was saying, um, but the audio and stuff is the same. Last week we had a little bit of an issue with audio, so we got uh, some new mic clips that we designed through printed. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, but let's go ahead and start the show this week, or actually today. <laughs> the, the discount code is Pixel Prop. That uh, coincides with this week's project. It's a cosplay prop. We're doing a lot of cosplay props, so uh, let's run through the rest of the stuff. Uh, we still have some nice deals going on, for, uh, specifically for UPS. If y'all order $200 or more here in the States, you get free shipping. So that means if you order a printer, free shipping. We also got this cool thing going on called Same Day Delivery. It's only exclusive to New York City because that's where we can do that. And we also have Adafruit Daily, which is our newsletter. If you are interested in getting a daily Adafruit newsletter type stuff, you have to opt into it, pick your category, whatever. It's at adafruitdaily.com, completely separate from your Adafruit account. What are you prototyping? Uh, okay, let's start off with the project, really. I need a new slide that says this week's project. So I'm just going to go to the website. Oh, no, this thing's broken here. Um, can you do me a favor? That's not it, actually. It's over here under the table. Can you grab it while I uh, fix this? Oh, I can't fix it. <laughs> All right, well, give me a second, folks, while I adjust our thing here. So what I'm doing is just setting up uh, Google Chrome to be, there it is. How's that? Is that better? That is much better. Cool. <laughs> Mic muted? Yeah, OK. Yeah, so uh, this is this week's project. It is a cosplay prop. This is specific. This is called the Stormflower, uh, from a character named Lyran, uh, from the anime called Ruby. Season, uh, is it chapter four? Volume four just came out, which is pretty cool. So I figured I'd wrap up this project. Um, it's all 3D printed, and the electronics are really, really simple. All I'm using here is an Adafruit Trinket, a NeoPixel, a single NeoPixel, and a push button. So when you push the button, <clears throat> it, triggers a, it triggers a NeoPixel animation. And that's basically it. But it's really cool the way it's set up. And uh, the cosplay prop is, is pretty heavy on parts, but it's not too much of 3D printing. So I think it's pretty nice. Uh, here's the circuit diagram. Again, really, really simple. It's just uh, three components. We're really four with the battery, or five with the, with the button. It's really flexible, so you guys can use this for all sorts of different things, not just cosplay props, but you can use it for um, your costumes or um, really anything that needs uh, a push button or a triggered NeoPixel. So let's take a look at the overhead. Yay, overhead. So here's the prop itself. Um, most of it is uh, snap fit together, so there's a lot of like keys and things that slot into each other. And I think the battery's dead. Yay, go me for not turning it on. Yeah, so the battery's dead. But what I do have is the circuit itself. So here's the circuit itself in its most basic form, right? So here's the Adafruit, or here's the Adafruit pick, uh, trinket. And here is NeoPixel. So the easiest way to power this thing is to just use one of these guys, which is a USB battery pack. This is like 2200 milliamps. So depending on your prop or your outfit, whatever uh, will fit in your, uh, in your project, uh, think about it accordingly. So it's turned on. And what I did here is I actually have a different um, set of values for the, for the colors, for the duration of it, and the amount of them. So in the code, you can really be flexible and customize it to where you can have your custom colors 
uh, custom time, and then like make as many as you want. And I'll show you the code in a second here. So what's going on is it's fading. It, it turns on white, fades to red, and then red slowly fades to orange, and then orange slowly fades to off, to black. So that's a lot different than what is in the cosplay prop itself. It's like a lot faster, so you can adjust the speed, and it's, I think it's just like from going from white to blue, but you can have as many colors as you want here. So that's the circuit in itself. It's really, really simple, just a couple of wire connections. So if you're relatively new to electronics, I think this is a really great project uh, to consider. A really quick circuit to, to consider to adding to your project. So the code and the circuit diagram is all here. So here's the circuit diagram page with all the wires, all the wiring connections broken out. And then in the code, you can see here, this is where everything's all cool and uh, customizable. Here, here's the main loop, right? So this is where you would want to change stuff. So it's the, the animation function we call the animate gradient fill appropriately. And what we're saying is in these first three colors, these first three values is the color. So this is 255, 255, 255. That's white. And then this is uh, 00, 255. So this is uh, white, uh, red, or not red, uh, green, no, blue. Yeah, so this is blue. And then this is going from uh, a lighter blue to uh, to a different color and then that color to off. So you can add as many as, these, as, as of these as you want and then the 150 value is the duration of it. So it's 150 uh, milliseconds which is a fraction of a second and you can get as creative as you want with this and if you didn't want the button trigger, if you just want this running constantly as an animation you can just take out this if statement and this else statement or this else block. And that's it. Everything else here is really just kind of filtering out the, uh, the values and smoothing it out so that it works uh, with RGB values. But it's basically uh, a math equation, this one here. It's linear interpolation. And Tony D actually wrote all this, uh, I think about a year ago, for a different project. And this one just sort of reuses it and brings it back in the spotlight for folks to check out if they're new uh, to electronics and Arduino in C. So there you go. I think it's cool. Um, this code would run on any microcontroller, really. Uh, but the trinket's a really nice one because uh, it's really small and it's like seven bucks. Okay. Hmm, what else did I want to cover? The design files. Uh, you can download those. It's done in Fusion 360, so they're all parametric. And uh, if if you want to just take a peek at the design, you're free to do so. You take a look at it. And it's on Thingiverse, it's on Pin Shape, it's on Umagine. They're all there. I think that's it. I think that's it for the project. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know. Um, if you guys know any uh, prop makers, cosplay prop makers, um, let them know about this. I, I would greatly appreciate that. So how are we doing in the chat? Is everything okay? Yeah, you're good. Okay, cool. Audio is still running. Excellent. All right. I forget if you guys want to pick up any of these circuits. Save a little bit of money. Yeah. Speaking of circuits, I want to talk about uh, NeoPixels and different types of NeoPixels. So there's a lot of different uh, formats of the NeoPixels. This one is actually not the one I used in the project. This is a different one. It's called the breadboard friendly one. And the breadboard friendly one is, I'm trying to focus here. There we go. It's a little bit bigger. So here it is. Uh, it has uh, pins right here. Uh, yeah, it just pins, pinholes. What do you call them, pinholes? So for in and out, because you can daisy chain these. So data in, then data out. So you can chain these up. Um, this is just what I had on hand. But the one I actually used in the project are these guys. These are mini NeoPixels. This worked out really well because it's the smallest form factor that we have for it. And it's so small that it has no pins, right? But where, where do you wire it? In the back, we have pads. So data in and data out. You can see the arrow tells you where uh, the data is supposed to go, the data stream. So you can always know where that goes. And I think they come in like five pack or something like that for, for a couple bucks. Uh, really, really small, but still pretty easy to, to wire up. And they can fit in all sorts of different things. So very, very small. 
The next thing we have is a new pixel stick. This is the stick with how many of them? Eight or something? Yeah, it looks like eight. <laughs> and they're just in a stick. You got two mounting holes, so if you want to stick it on somewhere. I've seen a lot of people use this in a lot of different projects. Um, so if you just need it in a form factor like that, the pins are in the, the pads are actually in the back here. And uh, again, data in, data out. It's easy. It's a nice density, so if you have something, if you have a prop that needs like a, a, a strip of them, that's, that's not curvy, then you get with, then you, you're good with this one. The next one is like I was showing you before, the, the breadboard ones, if you've got a breadboard type thing. Uh, this is a nice option, it's still small. Um, it's easy to solder into and solder into, and there are little mounting, two mount holes on each pixel, which is kind of nice. So that's the footprint. Yeah, so yeah, again, this, this shape, you know, it's, it's, it's all about the shape and, and mounting holes, like what does your project need? And then the last type I want to talk about are the sewable NeoPixels. These are specifically for wearable projects where you plan to embed them into fabrics or other tech, textiles. And uh, they do have pins, but they're, hey look, it survived. They're, they're both, you know, um, they're, uh, the holes are, are, are fairly large enough for, for threading, for sewing, and for soldering. So these are a little bit bigger than these because you, you need area for the pads. So you can see there how, how big they are. So yeah, it's, these are really mini, these are called the mini PCB NeoPixels, these guys, the white ones, and then these are uh, the sewable Flora NeoPixels. They're all the same type of NeoPixel, WS2812, but again, it's, it's all about the PCB, the format, how, how big you want it, does it fit your project. Well, hopefully that helps somebody out. Oh yeah, and we also have rings. These rings are coming uh, 12, tw uh, 16, 24, and 60, which is pretty, pretty nice. So a lot of different options there. And the pads are right here. The newer ones now have like multiple uh, ground and power. Well, depending on which pixel you get, which, which ring size you get. But these are awesome. I use these in a lot of projects too. Definitely good for glasses and stuff, eyewear. Cool. <laughs> I hope that went well. If you guys have any questions on recommendations for what type of NeoPixel you should use in your cosplay, or your wearable projects, let us know in the comments, yeah. and we'll try to get to them. You sh you're watching the YouTube stream, right? It's okay? Yeah. All right. Mine, it, in the back end of YouTube, it says bad stream status. So that's what's making me a little nervous. How about we go to the next thing? Let's talk about what we're actually prototyping. Pedro's got a really cool project. I'm excited to have worked on this one. It's a little bit different than what we usually do. So I think two weeks ago, we talked about the Hot Wheels um, GoPro mount for that. So this was the initial prototype that I made for that. So it's a one-piece NinjaFlex design and it's meant to add wheels onto your GoPro session so you can get some really cool point of view shots when you're going down a track. So after a lot of testing we figured out that the center of balance was a little um, offset because of the way that the wheels are so close to each other. So it would always fall over and we were trying to do a um, pretty deep incline, so yeah. going back to the drawing board, I made it a two-piece design and added the, uh, I want to call this the axle um, like track part of it a little bit more longer so that it would have more room so it wouldn't sort of topple over itself. So it's a two-piece design. The bottom part is printed in PLA, PHA, and then we have Ninja Flex for the top here with a T-slot that is connecting the two pieces together. So it just slides on like so. Oh, let's see if I can get it on there. I, I like to clip it in. But like yeah, this is... that. There you go. It's got a nice tight fit. And when we tested it, when it does topple over, if you, if you do like a, a really steep incline, it stays on really, really tightly. That's because uh, NinjaFlex has a, a friction fit mm -hmm. to the to the piece. Yeah, so it's pretty tight on here. Like the way I designed it, our um, the numbers are pretty um, tight onto the body, so it can. This will not work with regular hard, yeah. hard plastic. So you'd have to edit the sketches to get this to fit inside there. But you have nice little cutouts for the buttons and the 
um, the screen display here. Easier to put on than take off. Yeah. The struggle is, is there. Yeah. So like we were saying um, last week, both of these um, wheels are actually held together by a piece of filament that's acting as the axle for that. And really surprised to find out that they spin just as long as a regular Hot Wheels car. Yeah, so and with the weight of it, 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 it gives it a little bit more momentum if it's going down an mm -hmm. incline. So it actually yeah. works out really well. Um, so of course, this was inspired by the Hot Wheels stunt video uh, by the five mad movie makers on YouTube. They have a really awesome channel, and that's sort of their thing is to is to make like marble runs and stuff. And mm -hmm. Uh, when we, when uh, Phil showed us the view, we were like, yeah, this is cool. So our That's goal was cool. to come up with a, a nice solution. We don't reuse any of the Hot Wheels parts. So how does this look? I, I shared something on, on uh, Instagram, which I'll show in a minute, but take a look at this. Here's our initial prototype test runs with this guy. I think this is actually with the older body. This no, is why I kept uh, flopping no, over there. So one of the things we had to figure out was how to actually get this to stay on, and then you did some tests on figuring out um, doing sta warp stabilizing inside yeah, of so, a Yeah, premiere. so this right here is actually not stabilized. This just shot at 60 frames a second, so I slowed it down uh, half that speed to give it a bit more, because uh, it's so fast. The, 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 car, the little car is going really fast, so to slow it down, it, it works really well to, to record at 60 frames. And again, so this is side by side of with Warp Stabilizer in Premiere, Adobe's Premiere a video editing system, and the, the left side shows it with with Warp Stabilizer, right shows it without. You can you can see, I mean yourself, you see how shaky it is. So indoors, the Warp Stabilizer doesn't work so well, um, and the GoPro has to struggle kind of to compensate for the low light situation. Even though it's like there's a lot of light in there, it's still a little choppy and stuff. So. These are some initial tests, and then what I posted on Instagram was a little taste of uh, the shoot. We went to the park here, the local park, and we found some really nice areas uh, to test this out. So this is just going down an incline, and the tracks are just standard Hot Wheels tracks. We have like uh, two packs, and that was it. People are asking, what are we printing with? Um, if you're talking about this specific project, I use the Ultimaker to print out the wheels and the axle holder part, and then the Type A machines to print the Ninja Flex. But this easily could have worked on the Flashforge uh, Creator Pro yeah. or the Printer Replicator Play 2. You can do it as well, I believe. The Ultimaker, Ultimaker can, is... has the, um, it's like the Cheetah uh, Ninja Flex uh, filament. Yeah, they so have their own brand of TPU as well. Yeah. That'll work as well. Yeah, this will work with uh, all sorts of flexible materials. Mm -hmm. uh, semi, uh, Cheetah. I just chose uh, original Ninja Flex just because that's what we had for the green colors. I wanted something that stood out. Okay. Uh, did we use heat shock axle filament with a mirror to keep it straight? Um, so for the axle, uh, definitely recommend using ABS or PLA PHA. Or nylon, anything that's not going to break because these this can break. Yeah, so when you're going down like a steep incline and you crash down and apply a lot of pressure to the wheel part, the little rivet uh, will break off. Mm -hmm. um, so when we were shooting everything down at the park, we had to bring like a lighter with us, an extra piece of filament so we could <laughs> yeah, it did repair happen. any uh, damages. Yeah. But yeah, really quite pleased with the way this came out, and it's super it's fun, fun setting up all of the tracks and having them go down. Here's a great so useful project for your session that's collecting dust. No, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people use for time lapses, and that's a great option as well, but it's really cool to get this kind of fun shot. And uh, the, the project will be released next week, and we'll look at more of the CAD and some more of the um, tests that we shot. Uh, for this next week. So nice right. little project coming up. Very fun. Another one that we're working on is MicroPython Watch. So if you guys check out YouTube stream or Instagram, I think it was posted there too. Um, we've been doing a lot of, um, specifically Scott and Tony have been doing a lot of work with MicroPython, oh, yeah. porting that over to the SAMD. And Phil wanted a watch to go along with that. So here is um, some of the test prototypes that I'm coming up with for the case for that. And the band um, is obviously copied from the new uh, Nike Sports Apple Watch uh, that came out uh, not too oh, long ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's doing dual color on here. And we're just using 
the swap filament um, procedure where you create two processes inside of Simplify 3D and have it print up to a certain height. And then when the next print starts, it just prints right on top of there to do the blue on top of the yellow. So we were going after the, uh, my, the actually the Python colors are it's blue and yellow. Mm -hmm. And then the MicroPython one is going to be orange and yellow. And here's just two of the different designs that I came up with that. Um, doesn't really remind me of a snake. And now that I look at it, it looks more like um, sort of plaid <laughs> to me. Well, so I think cool. I'm going to stick with can, this one. Yeah, OK. <laughs> cool. So we'll show well, more of that off. Yeah, this uh, is uh, for what a feather board? Which feather board? Uh, Huzzah and so the this OLED? is no, this is the um, M zero the M zero okay. um, basic uh, board mm -hmm. with an RTC okay, on so top of that. Three boards, and then the OLED uh, feather goes yeah. right on top of that. And you have your ports for reprogramming and resetting. And this is going to be perfect project for students who want to be. Um, learning this, uh, you can easily plug in your USB cable on the side. And oh man, once you, if you guys haven't tried out MicroPython on the M0s. Oh man, it is such a game changer. You plug it in and it loads like a USB drive and then you just open up your favorite text editor, type in and it automatically updates. It's so cool, as soon as you hit save, um, even flashing the firmware for it was super easy right. just in the terminal, um, all the, the the, the commands to flash it are all on Tony's guide. So if you want to check that out, uh, just search for MicroPython on uh, SAMD mm -hmm. on the learning system. And yeah, it it's is a game changer. Um, it makes things a lot easier. Oh my God, a lot more enjoyable okay. for, uh, yeah. doing projects like this. That's so definitely great. check that out. We'll keep uh, taking a look at this and follow us on all the social media channels if you want to see behind the scenes of the progress for this. That's great. It's a cool project. Cool, well that's what we're prototyping. Next week we'll have so even more amazing things. Real quick, people in the chat room are very happy to be here. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Can we use Interflex to create vibration dampening mechanisms that cut down on camera shake? Yes, you oh, yeah. can. Yeah, we, we, uh, we were considering doing that. So the track is, you know, sort of going, yeah. wa waving up and down with, uh, mm -hmm. with, you know, grass doesn't grow uniformly, right. so. Yep. So we have a lot better, smoother footage for the actual project to video that. Check out next week. Yeah. Okay. Philip Moyer likes PT's watch bear. Yeah. Uh, so specifically, he told me to design this. I'm thinking for like kids and students who um, uh, will want to, you know, not have theme a bear own. watch. Yeah, theme, theme it own. out. Because okay. uh, remember, um, in education, we want to get the whole spectrum down to you know hardware, coding, and then maybe designing and modifying this to yeah. uh, something different. So it's the whole stack of learning, which is uh, where That's this cool. comes in. So you yeah. always got to think about that. Yeah, um, and I like the Have it go beyond yeah. a bare board. Um, have them think critically about design, how this fit this hand, their hand, you know, the wrist size are all different. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll answer more deeper questions though in the, the Q&A section, which is at the end of the show. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right, I want to do some quick shop talk stuff. Um, there is a new version of Fusion 360. You guys know we love Fusion 360. There is a new update, came out uh, two days ago, 12 hours ago. A um, lot of stuff is simulation. I haven't done too much stuff with the simulation, but the uh, it's too long didn't read thing is just sit back and watch the video um, that explains all these. It did yeah, a really good it's job. Incredible, yeah. I think the the best thing that I'm going to be using a lot is right at the front of the video um, showing how you can do booleans by mm -hmm. selecting what you want to Great. be included in that boolean. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> so really, oh yeah, they have it all the way at the end? Yes. Yeah, just do. watch the video. A lot of cam stuff, a lot of new cam yes. stuff for five axis mills. Oh yeah, it's really cool. I don't have access to that, but that is amazing that they're uh, pushing the envelope there. All right, and some stuff with technical drawings as well. Always doing this. Okay, so here it is. So yeah, so when you're cutting and doing booleans and stuff, um, you have the you have the option now to specific to discreetly say which bodies you want to cut. Yeah. So a lot of the times really you cool. have to you have to make turn off three a whole steps. body just so that yeah you, can, you, you do three steps and now you can do it with one, mm -hmm. which is great because less time and uh, a less cluttered uh, timeline. Yeah, we it's really good stuff. I, I'm looking forward. It's to So funny it. how many hoops we have to jump through sometimes just to have one 
um, action inside the timeline. So yeah, you're not having yeah, like and three. It's like, and it comes <laughs> to bite you. And you're like, oh no, it's, I should have did it with three instead of one. Cool. So check that out if you use Fusion. They also came out with something called the Ultimate, uh, Ultimate subscription or whatever. So check that out if that interests well, it you. Should it's be, still free. It should be good for um, good students, for students, teachers, and, and, and ma hobby hobbyist makers like ourselves. Yeah. Cool. Another thing in, in uh, software news, uh, SVG other SVG support is back inside of other machine. Very right, cool. Yeah, yeah. And they have this awesome thing called Tool Library. We can add custom profiles I for know, yeah. for tool bits. So that's great. So if you're into CNC milling, I'm planning to, salut, Excuse me. I'm planning to get back into um, milling, CNC milling, subtractive goodness soon. <laughs> and we do have the other Mopro in stock. So if you're a company looking to uh, enhance and, and make your prototyping a lot quicker instead of waiting uh, your projects, mm -hmm. Oh, they're Mail Pro. It's amazing. Yeah, the thing we John always got to read that one, and he's gonna he's gonna do something. Yeah, is it awesome. It's yeah, gonna, yeah so the the, the, the uh, biggest eye opener is when you were sending off some PCBs at Osh Park. In the time that you got the email saying that it was ready to go in production, you had already three, finished three, three revisions, revisions before like, it even went and, out. And you don't really know until you're soldering, and you're like, oh crap, this thing's messed up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Giant stuff. It is. It is a, a, a nice chunk of change. You know, it's this is for this is for companies that it's are for doing companies PCB or, design. It's for people yeah. that are really looking yeah. to to expand their their, mm -hmm. their setup. Yep. So yeah. So definitely a must. Wow. Yeah. It's Check one of the most pro tools we have in um, in the shop. Yeah. So um, last week we had some microphone problems. Luckily, 3D printing is always there to yeah. come and save the day. So these are the clips that we were using actually for about two years. Yeah. This is from Ben Heck. Y'all know Ben Heck from from the show Ben Heck. <laughs> so he designed this. I think if you uh, one two three D and it's it's kind of over engineered for what we need. It worked well for us, but it, it always kind of scrunched up and goes against your throat. So I needed to design something simple and uh, a little bit uh, less definitely over, over engineered. Yeah. So here's what I came up with, guys. This was printed in uh, coffee filament. So there's a little. A uh, little channel groove. little channel where, where it bites into the, the wire, and then the microphone itself just kind of sticks out there, so it doesn't touch your throat, and it's not, it's, you can still point it towards your mouth, but with these microphones, they're omnidirectional, so it can catch it, just about anything that's in that area, so. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of methods and clips out there. None of them really fit this type of wire in this, uh, this sort of neck of the, of the thing. Um, and the way I printed it was, kind of flat like that with no supports. So I ended up making uh, an angled cutout for that channel where you see the wire. And I just printed in copy PLA, printed two of them out, and it saved our, our microphones. And I, I kind of over-engineered it too. You can see there's two little holes that was, I, I, my envision like I would put some sort of uh, something to hold it so that the mic doesn't come out, but it, since the wire snaps in place, it stays there, so. I don't know. I'll probably upload it if anybody needs it. But that's it. Sometimes uh, the easier shapes and geometries are, are what works best. Yeah, there was like a lot of support material that was needed for the Ben Heck one. Was this really? one? Yeah, there was support know. materials that was hey. required on that one. I should stop this time lapse. Can you excuse me for a second. <laughs> like this is the what we have to. Super cute project for the week after. I think yeah. the MicroPython watch. Um, have you posted a photo of it yet? No. <laughs> it is what is so this? Adorable. This is one piece of it. <laughs> Big standoffs and little nubs. Whoa. All right. Real quick, uh, Ein Mac wants a shout out. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. You get a shout out. You get a <laughs> shout out. Don't forget, guys. If you want to support the show, you can do so by also supporting your maker habits with coupon code. Looks pro. <laughs> and remember, you do get, um, if you're Makerspace Education, you do get uh, yeah, discounts you on that as well. Discounts as well. Cool. All right. What else do we have for Shop Talk? I think I got something else here. Just looking. Yeah, I think that's it for, sh for. Oh, no, no, no. We have some very nice cool tests with uh, the Ultimaker printing PVA support. That's one of the big things, the big uh, features, the Ultimaker 3. The Ultimaker 3 is great at is printing 
uh, PLA supports very complex projects. So let's take a look here. How yeah, long so one of the print so one of the printers needed an upgrade uh, piece printed out for it, and the recommendation was to do it with a resin printer. So I tried a half dozen times on the Ember 3D printer, and it just kept failing for each try. It's either the tray, the resin, the temperature, because we have it in the garage. But the Ultimaker, I decided to give it a try since they are really heavily advertising the PVA support for this. And oh my god, it turned out fantastic. Um, did take a little longer to print just because of the nozzle switching that is going on. And the PVA held up uh, pretty good. Um, a lot of the people's concerns was, oh, is it going to uptake all this moisture when it's in there for a long period of time? Um, answer is it held up pretty well. It extruded fine. There was no popping um, after, I believe, eight hours of printing this uh, because it was at uh, 100 microns. So it did take quite a while. And dissolving it in just regular um, warm tap water took about half an hour. So uh, my time lapse uh, uh, is a little bit choppy because the, you know not enough frames were taken during it because it happened so fast. <laughs> and here's what it looks like if you want to jump over to the overhead. Yeah. This is definitely something that you could not print with regular supports because it would fuse to all closer? these little grooves and these little Even parts closer. that come out. There you go. Great. So here's some good detail of it. Uh, as Pedro was saying, there is a lot of detail there. It is very difficult to print this without any supports. And if you print it with regular supports, um, you're going to run into some fusion uh, issues, right? Where, where the, the materials fuse into the, mm -hmm. the design and there's very, very sharp edges, uh, tiny little chamfers and bells. What angle did you print it at? Just top ways like that? The bottom, yeah. So yeah. printed from here going okay, upwards. upwards. Okay, yeah. so that would have been hard to print, but that's ideal to print it. So. Stuart is saying that PVA on the Flash Forge Creator Pro works very well. Okay. That is something I've not tried, and I, we do have a 175 uh, PVA for that. Yeah. And the only thing that it might have came out cleaner on the Ultimaker just because it has that retracting head um, that cools down. It like moves out of the way, retracts, mm -hmm. wipes off, cools down, and then goes over to print. Um, I don't know how to set up that operation on a Flash Forge. If you have is a it done in simple, if you have a simplified profile for that, uh, please send a link over to that. I'd love to try that on there. Yeah. Usually we have to do like an U shield to clean up the uh, the other nozzle. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, cool. Very happy with that. So yeah, um, not hyped advertisement on no, really uh, works well. Ultimaker's uh, part. They. Uh, comes out really good. Yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> a pretty small part, too. Yeah. A lot of fine details. Um, you know, it's a shame uh, we couldn't get the the resin printer to, to, to because I'd love to compare them yeah. in terms of tolerances and yeah. things and quality. Mm -hmm. um, because support material, removing support material from a, 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 an, F, uh, an SLA, DLP SLA printer is a little bit difficult as well. You can leave some scuffs and stuff. OK. Yay. That's great. Just reading up? Yep. All right, cool. You guys ready for the next segment? Pedro? Next segment is... I know what it is. I'm just saying, are you ready? What is it? <laughs> it's it's cute. Uh, uh, community makes. Haven't done community makes in a minute, so I, I got a couple cool projects this week. If you guys have any projects, please email us at support at adafruit.com or tag us on Instagram, Twitter, or the like. I think those are the main big ones. So let's take a look now. I just wanted to shout out uh, some folks that um, put, posted a make of that mace project, the glowing icosahedron mace. Uh, there's some nice uh, makes of it. This one is from uh, Thingiverse user Boomerang Freak. This looks really nice. It is printed in different, uh, I guess it's spray painted, so different finishing techniques. It looks kind of neat. I like it in gold, it looks pretty neat. I'm not sure if he's in the chat room, but Kirby G put this together. It is a uh, Arduino game. It's a game based on Arduino that teaches you uh, binary. Well, it's more like a, um, yeah, not, not guessing game, but you flip the switches uh, to, to make either a one or a zero. And his, so this is, Ar this is Arduino's uh, project hub. And it's actually really clean. I kind of prefer it more than, 
than Instructables. Instructables is kind of heavy. It's got ads and stuff, and this is very, very clean. Great job on the, on the, on the documentation, Kirby. I really love the photos. It makes it really, really clear and simple. I love the white <laughs> background. Um, and it looks awesome. He 3D printed it, of course, um, but he also um, sent it off to Pinoco for laser cutting. So it looks really nice. Really like it. It's very educational, too. It's fun. Really big thing that this project uses is you guys know about fritzing, how you can create your own uh, circuit diagrams and stuff. You can even create a PCB and schematics, and fritzing does that very well. Uh, but there's this piece of software from Autodesk called, is it 123D Circuits, or what do they call it? Circuits IO? Yeah. yeah they, they renamed it to Circuits IO. It was 123D Circuits, not Circuits IO. This is a, an on, uh, a, a, a browser-based uh, fritzing diagram type inter, uh, environment. But the cool thing is that this is actually uh, simulated. So this is, so you can actually run Arduino code. See, there's a code editor here. This is Kirby's code right here. And the components and stuff, uh, I think they're adding more components to the library like every, every so often. You get a build of materials. So what, what's being used here? Um, you can download Gerbo files, export Eagle board. That's awesome. There's a lot of awesome functionality going on here, but my favorite thing is that it is simulated. So I'm going to start the simulation. And my number is five. And I actually don't know binary too well, so I'm not going to really work well. So anyway, uh, the switches, uh, when, you when you click on them, they, you're either making it a zero or a one. So you can see here, it's dynamically changing as I click on these. So every component is interactive. And all the wiring is interactive, obviously. And when I, let's say I want to try this out. <laughs> try again. So it actually simulates the noise from the piezo. So that's really cool. I wonder what this does. Is it brightness or something? I don't know. But check this out, guys. This is really cool. Great job, Kirby. It really, really shows showcases how awesome uh, Autodesk Circuits when, Circuits IO is. So to take that next step, it, I, I like CADing a lot. You know, where I'm like kind of simulating my CAD before I print it, and this is a great example of. Uh, kind of simulating everything you can possibly before you actually wire anything. So that's great. And it's interactive and you can embed this in, in lots of different places, which you did uh, in, in the project hub for Arduino. I hope I explained that well. Probably not. <laughs> but it's, I'm excited about it. It's I, a I simulator for circuits. I said all that. It's just, you know. Cool. Oh, and up. there's a lot of great, I, I made an account, or I signed up anyway. I'm always signed up. And there's a lot of projects that are uh, shareable, so you can share projects. It's not like Thingiverse or Pinshape where you share your circuit in your project, and not only are you showing your, your diagram, you're showing your code. So here's the code for this project. Um, you can import, you know, libraries. So here's the Adafruit NeoPixel library, and here are actual NeoPixel parts. Now I don't think you can make. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you can make parts for one, two, three. Like the the folks, the developers, are the ones who are making the parts. Fritzing, you can make parts. Uh, I don't know if you can do that here. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. So this is set up with a little uh, at tiny uh, uh, processor chip and a couple NeoPixel rings, a capacitor, an IR sensor, um, a five volt MOSFET, I believe, and a power supply. So let me start the simulation. You can see here the uh, the 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 power supply actually is 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 changing live, which is great. I will now pick a button here and I get this animation here so you can test your NeoPixel animations. There's three and what does one do? Makes it blue. That is really cool. So again, this is it's awesome. You guys heard about this? If not, check it out. It's free to, to, to sign up and all that. If you have an existing account with Autodesk, just sign up with that. That's what I did. Good stuff. There's a lot of projects out here. Oh, yeah, and yeah, and they have this uh, PCB mode, or Eagle CAD mode, I'm going to call it. It's CADing mode. Cool. So let me go back to 123 circuits, go home, and then you'll be able to see all of the awesome projects that are just sort of at your fingertips. I love this section here. So they, it comes with like built-in uh, 
tutorials. Like here's how to do a basic breadboard. Here's Arduino basics. This is a really great way. If you've never done any Arduino stuff, check this out and, and, and spend some time here. This is going to be great for the classroom, I think. Absolutely essential. Um, this Again, this is what others are doing. It's all shared. I think these are like featured projects or something. And it's all open, in a sense. It's great. I've been rambling, haven't I? Don't know. <laughs> cool. What else do we have? <laughs> I want to shout out Andrew Chalkers. He showed up on Adafruit's show and tell yesterday. And he showed off this, um, this sort of utility, this tool, this online tool that he put together. So the lovely folks at uh, Things SDK, he's one of the contributors, they are making it so that you can run JavaScript on microcontrollers. So if you're interested in, in that and, and writing JavaScript for microcontrollers, uh, check, check out their project. It's called Things SDK. There's Andrew right there, and there's a lot of other contributors. Awesome, awesome folks. It's all open. This is the project, uh, or this is the tool that he showed off yesterday. He, put, he had a Halloween happen, and he used uh, quite a few different uh, LED matrixy backpacks. Um, and he needed a way to there, or you can um, just click around. So I'm going to hit uh, new frame, and then I can draw here. Just click and drag, and then you get a preview on this side here, on the right side. It shows you what what's what the animation looks like. So that's really cool. Um, and then you can output the code in JavaScript or in uh, in C. So you can copy this and put it in your Arduino sketch and uh, get yourself uh, some nice LED matrix animations. So this works really well. I actually, when I did the BMO project, because I, I did a BMO project where I used the Gemma and, um, and an LED backpack, the 8x8 one, which this is 8x8, I believe. Maybe more. And so you can add new frames. You can uh, go to the next frame. You can delete frames. So I'm going to delete all these frames. And it's, I just like how it's like, uh, it's using some nice, uh, maybe it's jQuery or, or JavaScript, right? Good stuff. So you can make like smiley faces. And then when you refresh, it, it defaults to like a smiley face. So uh, I will uh, make a new, and I like when you make a new frame, it keeps the old one. So there you go, there's another frame. There you go. So I got my little happy face kind of animated. And that's it. Very easy, very fun. Check it out. It's uh, annie-matrix.thingssdk.com. I'll link that below as well. Yeah. Uh, eight by eight. Yeah, these are, the, these are the matrices I'm talking about. These guys, these specific ones. He uses this uh, specific uh, chipset. And these guys too. Oh, I forget the chipset, but it's in there. We have small ones, big ones, all sorts. Yeah. The HT16K33. <clears throat> okay, cool. All right. So again, Andrew Chalkers, awesome. Thank you for showing this off. I'm going to use this whenever I need a, an animation editor like that for the Matrix backpacks. Cools. That's it for Shop Talk. I mean, Community Makes. Again, if you guys want to uh, share your project with us, we'll post it up on the blog and we'll talk about it on the show. Cool. Now we're on to the Q&A section. So if you folks were having questions, let me know. I think one, oh, I messed this up. I think one of them was, uh, what's the cheapest printer I can get? <laughs> Which is like always the question. Yeah, people want um, big volume, uh, not too much. And everybody's always suggesting the Prusa i3. The Prusa i3. Okay, we, two. we heard that the, the mono printer that's like, what is it, 200, 300 dollars? It's pretty good, yeah. It's pretty good as well. Printerbot Play is at 200, 300 dollars. Yeah. This new one that came out on Kickstarter was Indiegogo, one of those, crowdfund, GoFund. Uh, was the pocket, pocket printer or something? It's not out, but. Simon's asking, was that filament orange 175? Actually, no, this is the spool that came with the Ultimaker, yeah, so it's uh, two. 285. Yeah. Trying to fix mine. Okay. Stuart is saying, uh, what about the new Delta printer for 399? Still testing that out. 
but... 399? That's a different one. Maybe, is it a smaller one or a different one? I'm not sure. So many printers, so many options, it's a great thing. Uh, a lot of people are making reviews and, and getting them sent and stuff, and it's hard to, jungle, uh, to juggle uh, doing that and uh, doing projects every week. So we, we have to really um, allocate our time properly. So we can't really test all of the 3D printers we'd love to, but the ones we do get our hands on, we do test them. And if, if we like them and if they work out really well, we bring them in the shop. Jacob is asking about the uh, Game Girl 2. Could he have both an analog stick and a D-pad? Yes, you can. You need something to convert the analog and digital. And one way to do that is to use the Adafruit um, do, 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 joystick converter thing. Uh, what do we call it? The Cupcade adapter? Here it is. Check it out. It is linked right over here. There it is. This guy over here does all the heavy lifting for you. It turns in uh, uh, an analog joystick into digital signal so that your Raspberry Pi can understand it to wire it and stuff. I used it in uh, the Super Game Pi project and it's also used, it was exclusively made for the Cupcade project, um, but I also used it in the Super Game Pi project. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, that's what you need. And this works with uh, this thumb joystick. Where is it, thumb joystick? I don't see it here. But if you type in joystick, this is the one that it works with. Uh, is it this one or this one? Probably this one. Yeah, this one, because it has those uh, pinouts here. It's a little big, it's not too big, but um, yeah, I did it in the Super Game Pair project. Cool. And maybe it'll work with this one too. I'm not sure, I have, to, I have to ask and try it out. This little guy here. This one, this is the mini thumbstick. I think it'll work and it works with uh, this guy, this guy here. It's like a PSP uh, thumbstick thing. So yeah, you have to get the thumbstick and the breakout and then the, uh, uh, the ADC. Cool. The adapter thing. Next question. Let me know how it goes out. And if you have any problems, you can always post in the forums and our dedicated support team will help you out. Uh, I believe that's it. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I've, again, you know, we're running on new hardware, so I'm a little here and there, getting used to this new setup. Um, yeah, when I find time, I would love to do some more layer by layers and stuff, but I'm just... Uh, Trying to get caught up here. Get a nice little backlog of them, so yeah. it should be coming out pretty fierce once you get all this figured out. Yeah, and I'll be a lot more comfortable with this new hardware. Great. Again, don't forget, guys, if you want to take take advantage of this, 10% uh, off discount. Pixel prop. I bet the cosplayers know. Neopixels are mm. great. <laughs> And don't forget, we will be stocking new printers soon for the upcoming holiday season, so definitely want to check out... I wonder which one. ...every Wednesday and Thursday, because I think we are the only place that will offer 10% off yeah. and free shipping. Yeah, bad for us. Great for you, though. Yeah. Cool. Well, don't forget, other shows, if you got a project you want to share with us, we'd love to see it and see you live. You can do that on a Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's when we do show and tell. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, Warren Phil. Full share, hour of Ask an Engineer. You can share take a the look knowledge. At, take a look at upcoming products yeah. and behind the scenes of everything going on at Eight yep. Fruit Factory. Maker news, news, news. Arduino news, Raspberry Pi news. Pseudo random happens randomly with the Colin Cunningham. He's so cunning. So much ham. Every week, we have a live programming session awesome. with Tony D. Doing two streams a, uh, a day, or a week, I think. Mm -hmm. It's so great. Definitely check that out for all the on awesome Twitch, exclusive on MicroPython Twitch. news later. coming up. YouTube, MicroPython news coming up. Desk of is ramping up. They're going to start doing some great stuff. But now, it is your moment of... You know how they have the moment of Zener? What is this moment? Moment of... The nozzle not being too, not close enough to the bed. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye, folks.